For this video, we're going to be recreating a table domain in Maximo Anywhere. In our scenario, an asset in Maximo has a hazard type, and based on that hazard type, a user can add a hazard to a work order that is filtered by the hazard type. So in this case, the hazard class is 2 on the asset, and when I click on my list, I only have the available hazards that are type 2. Looking at the table domain in the domains application, we can see that the domain is created by using the assets hazard type, which is the EQ1 field, and then filters the hazard object based on that hazard type. There's the where clause. Now that we know that, we can go to Anywhere Builder and recreate this table domain. Here we are in the Anywhere Builder application. We're looking at the Work Details view. But from here, we're going to open up the Data Explorer, right-click on the Work Order resource, and choose to add a new attribute for Maximo. In this case, we're going to add the hazard field that we created on Work Order to store the selected hazard that the user chooses from viewing the domain. So following the wizard, we'll select the hazard field and choose to add it to our application. Then we'll finish our wizard. Looking down and expanding the work order resource, we'll see the hazard field is available to the user. We also want to display the related assets hazard type on the work order as well. In order to do that, we're going to right click on the work order resource and choose append attribute to add a new attribute to our work order resource. This field is going to be populated with the related assets EQ1 data, our hazard type field. In order to do that, we need to set the described by to use the relationship, which in this case is SPI asset, then use the field SPI EQ1, which is our hazard type field. Now additionally, I'm going to lowercase the entire field name to match the other fields in the Data Explorer. We'll save our application, and our field is now available inside of Maxmo Anywhere. Now we're going to add the fields to the screen. One of the nice parts about Anywhere Builder is that it allows you to drag and drop these fields. So first, we're going to take the Asset Has class and put it directly under the Asset section and there it is displayed. Additionally, we're going to take the hazard field we created on the work order and place it underneath the asset section in the work detail view. Now that we added the fields to the screen, we want to add the actual lookup. Right click on hazard and choose add lookup. Here we'll follow the wizard to allow us to import the lookup. First we're going to choose MBO since we're using a table domain. Next, we're going to choose the actual table, which is hazard, and we're going to select the fields we want to display in our lookup. In this case, the hazard type, the hazard ID, and the description. Next, we'll review the details of the new OSLC resource. Now, we'll choose the layout to display the fields that we selected. We want something with three columns, and so we'll choose that and press Next. Now we'll bind the fields to the screen. First we'll show the hazard ID, the hazard type, and the description. Next we'll review some more details about the lookup, and we'll choose whether or not to add a validation event to this lookup. In this case, we're going to say yes. We don't want users entering any data that isn't in the list. Pressing Finish will be prompted with a confirmation dialog to let us know that we're going to be creating a new object structure and a new OSLC resource inside of Maximo. Now that the wizard's complete, we'll confirm that the hazard field on the work detail view has a lookup. And you can get back to the lookup details simply by double clicking on the lookup icon. From here, we're going to configure a filter on our lookup. This is so we can apply the table domain logic. To do that, you double click on the configure filter button, which takes you to our JavaScript editor. Clicking edit in here will allow you to modify the code. In this case, what we want to do is we want to filter the result set 
by the hazard class that is associated with the asset. So first we're going to get that value from our record. We're going to create a variable called has class and set it to the value that the resources asset has class field is. So that's the field we created with the related data from our asset record. Now based on that has class field we're going to filter the data. If it's null, we don't want to filter the list at all. We want to provide all the options to the end user. So that's what returning an empty JSON array does. Now, otherwise, we want to filter the list based on the has class. So we're going to return a JSON object in an array that filters the hazard type on the hazard resource by the has class field on our current work order record, which is the related data from our asset field, asset.eq1. Additionally, we want to make sure that we are filtering for exact matches. So we're going to say set.lookup filter exact match equal to true. Now that we've configured our filter, we'll save our code and we'll save our work execution application and test by building and previewing our application. We'll log into the application using the demo Wilson user. We'll navigate to a record that has an asset on it and we'll scroll down to the asset section to see that the hazard class on this record is 3 and therefore the list should be filtered to only hazards that have hazard types of 3. Similarly, if we look at a different record, we'll see that this record's hazard class is 2 and our list will only be records that have a class of 2. Now, if we look at the data and we want to compare the list to what is in Maximo, we can do that. We'll open up this record, 1115. We'll scroll down and see its hazard class 2 and review the choices. Heat 2, dust, rotation, falling, crash, and CS heat. And if we go into Maximo and open up record 1115, we'll see that our value list is the exact same we have heat to dust, rotation, falling, crash, and CS heat. So our table domain creation is successful and we've successfully reproduced the table domain inside of Maximo Anywhere using Anywhere Builder. If you have any questions about Anywhere Builder or about this video itself, contact us by emailing support at trmnet.com.